Howdy, AP Pre-Cal. It's Miss Kosh. I am working through um, Mr. Passwater's notes from topic 3-2. Um, this is the topic that I think does a mix of unit circle and then it is a nice lead into polar. So some of this my kids already know because I, I broke those two things apart. So AP Pre-Cal seems to be putting them together and I have uh, over the years just kind of kept them apart. But I want to teach through this um, the way that he wrote it and there are certain things that I may revisit. Um, there's certain things I expect my kids already to know because we already did the unit circle and then there's a bit more that um, that they might need again. So I'm going to try and make those distinctions for you. Um, to begin with, we talk about the standard position is when um, the initial um, I can't spell, initial side is on the um, x-axis going um, in the positive direction. So that's always the initial side of our ray. And then the terminal ray or the terminal side is um, where it opens up like that. So I make a point of talking about co-terminal angles also, um, which uh, he made, does he talk about co-terminal? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But um, we, he does talk about going in the positive direction and the negative direction later. So a coterminal angle would have the same terminal side. So if I start here but do a full rotation and then stop there, that angle is coterminal. Um, I also talk about reference angles, which will become important later as we go. So, um, so sine, cosine, and tangent. What we're looking at here as we get started, they're telling us um, that the radius is r. Um, and then we've got our angle theta and we've got some random point here, x, y, um, random point p that's coordinates are x and y. So we've got um, the y value here. I would have labeled the x here, even though it's labeled there. I mean, it's not wrong, but um, x and y, and that's the point um, x comma y. So sine is uh, from this angle opposite over hypotenuse, so y over r. Um, my kids should be really familiar with this. What's different now is that um, I would, we would always do the unit circle where we said our radius was equal to one. So that's how I've introduced this to them. So then if I have y over one, I don't need that. Um, but this is giving us a situation where we may have a different radius. Um, what will be helpful later would be to say that our y value is equal to r sine theta. This we're gonna see a lot as we keep going or at least historically, at, when I teach pre-cal, I have used that a lot. <laughs> we'll see what AP does for us. I'm learning along with you. Okay, same idea here. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over r. Um, it's just the x value when r is equal to 1. Um, and likewise, we can solve for x and say that x is equal to r cosine theta. Um, I make a distinction with my kids in class. Technically, if you said x is equal to cosine theta r, um, this is implying that we're multiplying here first, then taking the cosine. If we wrote it this way, then you're taking cosine of theta and multiplying it by r. That's fine, that's proper notation, but it's just kind of cumbersome. So I would take, I would, I would put theta, or I would, um, I would do, if there's something multiplying by cosine or by a trig function, I would bring it out to the front. And so I think this is a little more um, efficient way of saying that. Okay, um, and then our tangent value is opposite over adjacent, y over x, um, which is also um, sine over cosine. Um, remember that, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, that when r is 1, then, um, then it's just the y value is just sine and the x value is just cosine um, of theta. The other thing to remember is, okay, so if we said with this one, when they say... Um, Let's use this uh, right here. Okay, this is what I want to do. Um, if I take um, y is equal to r sine theta, and I'm saying, okay, so we're saying here tangent of theta is equal to y over x. We just said y was r sine theta, and then we just said x was r cosine theta. My r's can cancel. And so that is um, sine of theta over cosine theta. This is what we refer to as a quotient identity. Um, and... I love trig identities, so that's coming. And by definition, this tangent of theta equals sine over cosine is one of the two quotient identities. Okay, um, so then here is a multiple choice question, and maybe AP style. Um, the figure shows a circle. I haven't really worked through these, so here we go. The figure shows a circle centered at the origin with an angle measure theta in standard position. Okay, so it's starting here, and it's opening up there. 
Um, the terminal ray at the angle intersects the circle at P. Super. The coordinates are x, y, which of the following is true about cosine of theta? Well, cosine is going to be this x value divided by the radius. Well, do we know how big the radius is? Yes, we do. Because they're telling us this point is 3, so that means that um, 3 comma 0, that means that the radius is 3 um, units long. So this would be 3. So we can say cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's x over 3. Okay, so let's see. Um, so cosine is not going to be y, it's not going to be y, so it's one of these two. Um, x over 3, what does the rest of it say? Because the ratio of the horizontal displacement of p from the y-axis to the distance from the origin of p. Okay, that is a tough way to say it, but yes, displacement from the y-axis, here's the y-axis, the displacement from is this, um, and the origin in p, origin in p is the radius of the circle. So they picked a tricky way to say that, but... AP likes to do that. They, they say things in a way that you're like, wait, what are you talking about? And then you get it. Okay. Um, the next one says we have this point 3, 4. Um, it's a circle with radius 5, which we knew because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Um, if I drew this in, um, what this is saying is here, this is 3, this is 4. And if you know your Pythagorean triples, you know that this has to be 5. Um, okay, the figure shows a circle with radius 5 centered at the origin with an angle measure of theta and standard position. Um, so they're saying this angle is theta. The terminal ray intersects the circle at point P. Okay, so if this is 3, this is still, we still have a hypotenuse of 5. And instead of going up 4, we're now going down 4 units. Um, when we draw these triangles in um, around our the, uh, in our unit circle or any kind of circle, you can change the size of the radius. Um, I would always recommend keeping the, the hypotenuse positive. The radius is always positive, And then make these things, the x and the y, positive and negative, depending on which quadrant you're in. Okay, so sine is going to be opposite, which is negative 4, over hypotenuse, which is 5. So negative 4 fifths. Um, so technically, we're, we're basing it off of this triangle. But, um, I mean, I look at this little angle right here. Um, and... If I, if I use this angle, um, and this is a 3, and this is a 4, and this is a 5, well, then we know sine is going to be 4 over 5. But because we're moving in the, um, and lengths of sides of triangles are always positive, I get that. But if we're moving in the negative direction, this will take care of the fact that our sine value needs to be negative. So make that negative right there. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so negative 4 thirds. Um, and hopefully, my kids, this makes complete sense to you because we have done enough with the unit circle and you know positive negatives and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's see. Um, we'll do, I'll do this page and then start the next video. Um, okay, so on this one, what do they tell us? They tell us that the, that the, um, the center has a, um, a radius of r. And so then we want, okay, Q over here is going to have the same. They're showing us, okay, got reflected, reflected, reflected. I would call P the reference angle for the other, four, other three. Well, it's its own reference angle. But P ends up being the reference angle for all four angles here. Um, and so what have we done? We moved X. This length and this length are the same, except it's now negative. So this is a negative X and a positive Y. This is a negative x, negative y. My kids should be really good at this because we do this all the time with unit circle. A positive x and now a negative y. And all of, oh, I wrote that. Okay, whatever. Um, and then it says, um, find the sine of the angle whose terminal ray intersects the circle at point s. Okay, so sine is going to be y over the um, r. So negative y over r is going to be sine of that theta. Find the cosine. Um, uh, at point Q. Here's Q. Cosine is the x value, which is a negative x over r. So negative x over r. Maybe this equals. Okay, maybe I should use better notation. Um, sine of theta that they give us or whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. I mean, theta is great, but we keep using theta for all of them. And that's not quite accurate, but whatever. Um, find the tangent for the terminal right here intersects at r. Well, r, okay, so tangent of this new theta. Theta, this is, we're going to call this theta 1, we're going to call this theta 2, and this theta 3. Here comes theta 4, just so that I have different variables for everybody. Um, and that's going to be the y over x. And since it's negative over negative, it becomes positive. And there we go. Okay, last one on this part. 
And, okay, it tells us um, to let theta be the angle in standard position whose terminal ray coincides with the line y equals negative. Okay, so negatives are right here. So um, a negative 3 means over, rise over run. So 1, 2, 3, and then back 1. Um, or 1, 2, oops, I lied. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Okay, so we're looking at this line in quadrant 2. Okay, I don't care about this part. My bad. This is quadrant 4. We don't care. Quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, I went over. This is a positive. Oh, I lied. It's a negative 1. And this is a positive 3. And then we can do Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared is 9 plus 1 squared. Well, negative 1 squared is positive 1, so 10. This becomes root 10. Okay, so sine of theta is going to be opposite over, so 3 over root 10. I would probably not make my kids rationalize that if that were up to me, um, but I think AP will ask you to rationalize, so this is 3 root 10 over 10. All right, cosine is going to be the negative 1 over root 10, so I would be happy that with that answer, but they didn't ask me. I, I just don't, anyway, these I don't, I don't want to rationalize them because then when we go to find secant, cosecant, cotangent, then you have to flip them over and then rationalize it again, and it's just uh, not beneficial in my opinion, but that's fine. Okay, tangent um, is going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's negative 3. It's also the slope of the line. So notice here we have the slope of the line. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Did they talk? Did he talk about it being slope? And I... Oh, it is the slope. Okay, I forgot to say that. So tangent is the slope. Um, hopefully, I'm going quickly through this because I think my kids know it because of the unit circle. The only thing in all of this that changed is that our radius might not always be equal to 1. All right, go study. Go practice. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Goodbye.